Hi there. Thanks for tuning into my page today. I'm Carly Sink and I wanted to chat a little bit today about how essential oils can be balancing for the chakras. And so I am a aromatherapist. I've been trained um, probably three or four years ago um, and went through a clinical aromatherapy certification program. And I use essential oils um, pretty much in every aspect of my life, actually. Um, but one of my favorite things to study is not just the physical, you know, healing properties of the oils, but also the um, energetics of the oils and how they can work with various parts of the body, whether it's um, helping clear the mind or helping different emotional trauma. But one thing we can do with essential oils is work uh, with the chakras. And, uh, the, you know, the chakras, if you're in yoga or have studied um, different traditions, the chakras are energetic centers in our body. We have seven main ones, and they start basically at the root. They work up to the sacral, the solar plexus, the heart, throat, um, third eye, and the crown chakra. And, um, you know, each of these energetic centers has different um, emotions that are related to them. They have different um, nerve plexus, and I think this is really cool. You can see in this picture here, there are actually different nerve plexus that run along the spine that connect in with the different chakras. And so you can see the little vortexes or wheels coming off. And so very often we think about things, you know, in the physical form, because that's how we see our reality with our eyes, we sense and touch. But at a higher dimensional level, there are, there's, it's energy and information. And so I kind of like to see our bodies almost like a little biological computer. And these, you know, different systems or different parts are, are running programs that our chakras store memories. They store um, different types of emotions and they um, store different trauma. And, you know, over time, if we get off balance in a particular area, say, you know, your root chakra, you may start noticing some hip or sciatic issues um, that may be related to security or family issues. You know, in the heart area, if you've had a lot of um, heartache or trauma over the years, you may have, you know, kind of this tightness in your chest or maybe your shoulders are curling forward. And so our body very much speaks to, um, it's kind of like a little roadmap of our life. And so today I wanted to talk about how you can very easily use essential oils. You know, essential oils are, you know, we smell them, they're physical, but really what is happening is, they are all very specific, unique vibrations or frequencies that the oils give off that send a balancing signal to the body. And the body knows what to do with it, you know, especially if the oils are organic and very high quality, then you're, you know, and I'll talk about the different brands that I use. Um, I'm not particularly promoting any, um, any particular brand in general, but, um, you know, re really good high quality oils are going to resonate with your biofield, um, this field of energy that surrounds, uh, that surrounds you, and it can bring all kinds of amazing um, therapeutic benefits. And so um, each of the oils, as I work through the chakras, you know, you can apply them topically. Um, certain oils do need to be diluted, you know, before you, well, most oils need to be diluted before you apply them topically. Um, and there's a lot of different charts out there with different ratios depending on what um, therapeutic value you're looking to go for. But the um, you know main way I like to do it is you can even just smell them. I mean, smell you know our limbic system in our brain and all of those different signals that that happens when we inhale something in the olfactory system. Those molecules send a signal down the body um, and down through the nervous system. So even just the simple act of inhaling an oil can be very powerful. So I wanted to start out, I don't want to make this video too long, I want to make it easy and something you can kind of, you know, run through. Um, we're going to start out with the root chakra, which is um, the related to the earth. So a lot of our grounding oils. So think about ginger root or vetiver. Those oils are excellent for the root chakra. Um, and again, this is not an extensive list by any shape of the imagination. There are hundreds of oils out there and lots of different ways you can use them. Um, but a lot of the rooting oils, um, very earthy oils, um, help ground your energy down. 
And so if you feel ungrounded, it's, it's excellent to use um, something like ginger, vetiver, turmeric is another great one. It's very grounding. It's going to help draw that energy inward. Um, patchouli is another one that would be great for, um, and I have here rosewood. Um, so you can smell and, and as you inhale in, just imagine sending that energy down into the root chakra. The root chakra, the color related to it is red. Um, and so just imagine connecting your um, legs down into the earth, the root, drawing that our energy up from the mother and just feeling that power and that centeredness. Um, and then we'll work our way up to the sacral chakra. And so another, you know, I should have said this before I got into the root chakra. Another great way, if you don't know what an oil is used for specifically, very often you can look at the color of the plant and it relates to the color chakra that you're looking to work on. So say um, a great example would be, uh, you know, eucalyptus. The, the leaves of the tree are green. You can work on the um, the heart chakra, the heart space. And uh, that is excellent for opening up the lungs. It, it kind of uh, matches that area of the body. And uh, another good example would be something like Roman chamomile, which I'll get into later on. That's a, a more of a blue oil that's great for the throat chakra and the throat chakra color is blue. So as we work up towards the sacral chakra, um, the element of the sacral chakra is water. And great oils for the sacral chakra would be cedar wood or sandalwood. And um, the root chakra is re related to um, our feelings, our empathy towards others. It's um, kind of that sacred sexuality. It's a very powerful um, energy center. And so if you feel locked up or stagnant, like you're not moving forward in your life, you know, our hips and our sacral area um, is for a lot of movement. And so uh, using those oils in that area can help unlock the energy in that space. And so again, you can smell them or you can put them in, dilute them in a roll on and apply them topically to that area. Uh, and as we work up, we're, we're going to the solar plexus. Uh, this is uh, in some traditions called the city of jewels. And so it's the color yellow. It's very powerful. It's related to our digestive system and um, our personal power. And so lemongrass is excellent for this. A lot of the spicy oils. So black pepper, peppermint, cassia, ginger is another one. So some of these um, oils, as I mentioned, ginger is good for the root, but some of them can overlap for other chakras. Ginger is excellent for the digestive system. And so, and nausea. And so that's another one you can apply topically. You definitely want to dilute the ginger or the peppermint. Those can be um, kind of skin sensitive and uh, generate a lot of heat. Uh, so then we're working our way up towards the heart, the space of love. And it's not just the space of love for um, others, but also love of the self. And it relates very much to the lung space, the thymus space. And I very often like to think about our heart, um, you know, our, our arms and our palms are an extension of our heart, that expansive energy that we create around and people can feel, they, they've even done different studies, heart math is a great place to get some resources on uh, essential oil, not essential oils, I'm sorry, on heart rate variability, but also how our heart field expands to the environment around us and how other people can pick up that energy subconsciously and how we can have an impact on other people. And so a lot of the, the oil, some oils great for the heart chakra would be rose. Um, and while that may not be everybody's favorite oil, it's a very floral oil. Um, you know, it's an excellent one for heartache and trauma and stress, and it can help calm you down. When we get overstimulated or stressed out or in fear, we, we go into this constricted space. And finding a way to open things back up and become more expansive can be so powerful in our healing journey and just helping us kind of manage with day-to-day -day stress. So another oil that's great for the heart chakra would be geranium. You know, a lot of the flowers... Um, are really good for the heart space. So jasmine is another one that would be really good. Um, then you can look at some of the more expansive lung oils like eucalyptus or regansara, um, where it helps open up um, the diaphragm, the lungs, the heart, all that area. 
Um, let's see. And then we're working our way up to the throat. So the throat chakra is a, um, our space of communication. It's the color related to it is blue. And so if we have a block in the throat chakra, it could be something like you're not speaking your mind or you're not speaking your, your truth. Or maybe you can't get a word in edgewise with somebody. And so you get this locked up like feeling in your throat where you, it's uncomfortable. It's, it's, it's this lump that creates. And that's that constriction in that area. And our throat chakra is also related to creativity. And so when we feel constricted, we're not expressing ourselves or speaking our truth or speaking our mind or being our authentic selves, it can relate to issues in the throat chakra and maybe even get a little bit of pain in the back of the neck. Um, so you can apply the throat chakra oils to the back of the neck. You can apply them to the throat. You can breathe them in. Um, but any of the blue oils, blue tansy, German, or German aroma, chamomile is really good for that. Um, you know, any of the oils that kind of open up the... Um, throat area. So also, even though eucalyptus is used for the lung, it's great for the throat and tea tree oil. It's also um, a great one for the throat chakra. Let's see, we're moving on to our um, third eye or the pineal gland. And there are a lot of oils, there are a lot of sacred oils that are talked about in relation to the pineal gland, the third eye, and our crown chakra. So I'm going to kind of combine uh, a couple oils for both of those just because it's great whenever you know if you're applying it to the forehead you also want to apply it to the top of the head we a lot have a lot of energy centers that meet or acupuncture meridian lines that meet up at the top of the head so it's great to apply an oil to that space so lotus oil is excellent for that it's oxygenating for the brain and the pineal gland um, and it smells just absolutely incredible it's such a mood elevator um, rosemary is really good. It opens up the senses. It opens up the brain. It helps with memory and cognition. Peppermint is really good for the crown chakra and the um, third eye. It's very clear. It helps you clear your mental space so you can transmit energy and bring that energy and information in that the universe is trying to send you. Um, and then I wanted to talk, touch a little bit on, and also some of the sacred oils like myrrh and frankincense and spikenard, sandalwood, all of those are excellent oils. They're considered very sacred. They're even spoken about in the Bible and certain um, scriptural texts as having those therapeutic um, properties. And so one oil, if you, if you just have one oil to use, I wanted to speak a little bit to lavender. And we, we hear very commonly about lavender, and there is some um, research that says not to use it on, um, for men not to overuse it, and uh, women to use it just in, uh, try to, I would definitely dilute. And um, you just don't want it to, sometimes it can have an effect on your hormonal system, and so it's a little bit different for each and every person, but typically lavender is pretty safe. Um, so lavender is actually balancing for all of your chakras. And so in, a great way to use it is we have, um, even though we think about our chakra centers running up the center of the body, on the bottom of the feet, sorry, yes, I'm going to show you my foot. They're probably dirty from walking barefoot outside. But um, you can actually apply lavender to the bottom of the feet, and um, it, it gives you a very grounding effect. And it also... Um, it clears the chakras because you have chakra points on the bottom of the feet. You have chakra points on your hands. And so it's an excellent, easy way to kind of do a whole body balancing. And some places will say you can use lavender um, without diluting, but I personally just like to do, dilute everything just a little bit because really it's more about the energetics than how much of a smell you create with it. Um, you're still going to get that therapeutic effect and your attention is behind it and that ultimately trumps all. Um, and so using that lavender on a regular basis is excellent for balancing the chakras if you don't have anything, any of the other oils that I listed here. But, you know, find ways to use colors, sound, oils, crystals. I'm going to do a video on uh, chakra balancing and crystals. But these are easy ways that you can uh, work with these natural energies or natural frequencies to help bring your body back to balance and more of that resonant state. And so 
maybe you do a little balancing in the morning and in the evening, or if you're working on a specific chakra for that week, you can eat a specific color of food. Say you're working with grounding, you can work on eating a lot of foods with red um, or rooty foods. Uh, there's a lot of information about that online, but let me know if you have any questions and I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks.